Hi, welcome to the H4RL Career Podcast. I'm Jill. And I'm Dave. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about whether a college degree is worth it. Is it worth all the debt? Yeah, so this is a very interesting question. Um, we get a lot of questions from this from teens, and it's pretty common out there. Like Everyone wants to know, with college getting more and more expensive, is it really worth all the debt that you're going to take on? Actually, there's like two-thirds of everybody that kind of goes to college takes on some kind of financial or federal debt, all right? That adds up to about $1.6 trillion worth of debt. Wow. That's, so two-thirds of people who go to college have loans from the government. From the federal that government. they have to repay after college. Right. You also get private loans. That's just the federal loans, right? And about $100 billion of that $1.6 trillion is from parents because parents take out what they call plus loans. Now... We won't get into all the details here, but basically a student will have loans from the government for a certain amount, but then the government won't give you any more money. But the students get a lower interest rate, not great, but lower than their parents. And then the parents, if they want to, can take on more debt to pay for their kids' college separate from what the students pay. Those are called plus loans. Now, that's the other $100 billion worth of debt. So that's a lot of debt just by the parents, not to mention even the students. The average student is around 36, well, the average person has about $36,000 worth of student debts, with one seventh of those people having more than $50,000 worth of debt. And those numbers you're talking about now, those are just the student's own debt, so not including something their parents might have. Taken Absolutely. On. And that's only from what they can tell from like federal government data, not necessarily even talking about private loans, which aren't really tracked real well. So it could possibly be even more. In essence, it's just a crazy amount of debt. Now, I've I actually done a decent amount of research for this particular episode, so you might see me looking down a little bit, but I'm just trying to get my notes out here real quick. But uh, That's a lot of debt. You can see why people really are asking, is it worth it? Right. So 54% of people polled in a CNBC Plus and Momentum survey, around 5,000 people they, they surveyed, 54% said that their education was not worth it. Oh, man. 54%. Yeah, that's a lot. Now, the question is, it's not all the same, right? So Payscale had a, another survey, around 248,000 people, and they found out that people with different degrees had different satisfactions with, you know, if they thought it was worth going to college or not. That the, makes sense. What do you think were the highest ones? The ones who thought it was the most worth it? Hmm. Um, people who are making good money and probably either have really fun, cool jobs or helping other people. Yeah, maybe. It's actually engineers. Doctors. Actually, engineers and the science and STEM typically were the ones who were the most satisfied for the exact reason you said there. They typically are getting higher paying jobs and the debt they have compared to the money they're making isn't as much and they're probably more interested in the jobs that they're doing. The lowest people, the people with the least amount of satisfaction were humanities and those type of majors. Those guys, 75% of those people with that type of degree regretted getting their college mm -hmm. degree. They probably enjoyed what they studied in their classes, but then it's not real applicable later. Well, it's the type of job you can get. Now, you can get some interesting jobs. We'll talk about that in another episode about what you can do with these type of degrees, but a lot of humanities degrees, you are going to get, honestly, not really entry level. You're going to get more like general type of jobs, right? Because you're either going to teach history of the humanities degree or you just learn how to think and, you know, Right. Right, and do critical thinking, which is great. But, you know, engineering, you're going to get an engineering job. Or, you, know, you know, if you're going to like a microbiologist, you're going to get a microbiologist job, a more specific type of career paths. And they tend to pay a little bit more. So those were the ones who were the least satisfied with like the humanities. The people in the middle were people more in the, let's see here, what they say? Um, you have to wonder, though, those people in the humanities, they probably wouldn't be very well satisfied in the other type of job either. True. They're not interested in those sort of things. All right, so people in the middle category with about 66% saying that they kind of regretted it were in the health sciences and the business graduates. Because honestly, with just a bachelor's in business, it's still, again, one of those type of entry-level types of positions. You know, you might want to go on to get like a master's degree or something like that to really, if you want to move up in the business world. 
So maybe have more say and get to put a little more creativity into right. what you do. So that's the that's the pure facts of people who graduated. You know, matter of fact, uh, Gen Xers and also millennials were least well had lower opinions of whether they thought the college was worth it compared to baby boomers. And that's pretty simple and pretty easy to understand because college was a lot more affordable back when baby boomers were going to school. So they don't have as much debt. Whereas mm-hmm. the millennials and Gen Xers had to pay a lot more for college. So they probably have a lot more regret because it's a lot more money they're paying back. They've also had less time to pay it back. Yes. So the baby boomers are further removed from that. Maybe now they're thinking, well, yeah, it was good. So one thing you got to realize, though, is people might have regrets, but they may not have the jobs they currently have if they didn't have a college degree. So they're not sure where they would have been if they didn't have that college degree. Mm -hmm. That's one thing they have to kind of think about is like, you may not be making as much money as you're making now, even though you may not like your job and you have debt. Because you wouldn't have that college degree, which allowed you to have that job. So it's another thing you got to kind of think about. So this is not an easy question to answer. There's no like straightforward answer to this question. It's tough. Like most things in life, the answer depends. Now, part of the problem is, we're still talking about kind of what the problem is and why it is there, is 80% of students actually change their major when they're in college. So people get in college, think they're going to do one thing and realize in college that they don't necessarily want to do that and they change their major. And 43% of people actually don't graduate a four-year with a four-year degree in six years. So that means it takes at least 50% longer than they thought to get that major, which adds on to that debt because the average cost of a college credit hour is $600. And most classes in college are at least three credit hours which that means most college classes are at least $1,800. So if you're taking classes that you're not going to use, you can see how that debt adds up very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's not a great idea to go off to college not knowing what you want to do and have a very good idea of what you want to do because more than likely you're going to change your major based on statistics and you're going to be wasting money and getting more debt. Matter of fact, there was a Harvard-trained economist Again, there's a Harvard trained economist, uh, professor, Lawrence K. Uh, Kutnikov. I really hope I said that correctly. I apologize if I didn't. He's the author of Money Magic and Economics Economist Secrets to More Money, Less Risk, and a Better Life. All right. He wrote this interesting article on CNBC. I like to read a lot of articles out there about this type of thing. I'm interested in it, so I like to read articles about it. And he put it very interestingly. I'll read this quote. He says, think about it. How many of us would borrow at a high or to super high interest rate for the opportunity to invest in something with a 40% chance of a complete loss? Not many. Now, let's translate that because it's more of an economist's way of saying something. He's saying, how many of you would be willing to basically take your own money and invest in something knowing that you have a 40% chance of losing it all? And what he's referring to is about a third, a little bit more than a third of people who start college actually drop out and don't finish. And that is the absolute worst thing you could possibly do. Because now you get some of that college debt with no degree to show for it. And now you can't make the money to help pay that back. So that's what he's talking about here. Like how many people, and you're borrowing that money at a high, what he considers a high or super high interest rate. So. No. So he's saying, would you, he's kind of asking, would you invest in yourself, in your own college education, if you know you've got a 40% chance of just losing it all, anything you invest? Exactly. So, because for the general population, that's what it is. Right. So why is college so much more expensive nowadays than it was back when, you know, the boomers were going? Well, over the last 30 years, college has increased, if you adjust for inflation, all this fun num- stats out there by 8% per year, which is a decent amount, all right? Whereas most people's income, the household income, has been pretty much flat over the last 30 years. So college keeps going up in cost and everybody's earning potential is about flat over the rest of the time period. So that's why it's harder and harder for the average household to pay for college because we're not making any more when you adjust for inflation and college just keeps getting more and more expensive. And it gets more and more expensive because, well, 
new facilities, right? Everybody likes to go there and see brand new facilities, mm-hmm. right? New athletic center to go use, new dorms to stay in, nice new classrooms. And also is more expensive because there's a lot of – most colleges aren't super uh, efficient. They have a lot of what they call back office staff, administrative staff that don't really – contribute directly to the education of students. They're like, you know, admin and they're like overhead and they're like all the people who are running <laughs> the back end of a college. And that gets lumped into the overall cost of college, right? So so that gap is getting bigger and bigger over time between what we make and mm-hmm. have to spend on college and, and then how much it costs. Right. Plus, you know, a lot of college professors can get tenured. And so basically when they retire, they still keep making the money. They, they First of all, you can't fire them. And then eventually when they do retire, they have a pretty good pension program. you got to pay for that pension on top of the professors who are currently teaching you. And all in all, it's just not a very efficiently run organization. If so we, college costs a lot now. College costs a lot. That's a it's good way expensive. of get, It's a good way of getting down to it. All right. So. With all that being said, a lot of this triggered when I actually, again, heard heard and read an article from NPR, National Public Radio, that said one million students currently are not oh, – there's one million less students in college than there were basically before the COVID pandemic. Mm-hmm. And right now, this is 2022 as we're recording this. So the last two years, there's one million students less. So a lot fewer students in college. So why is that? Why is there one million less students? Well, they people were looking into this, and they think part of it is the fact that you know when they first said the first part was like it's the pandemic and people just don't want to go to college because of COVID and getting sick, so less people dropped out about half about five hundred thousand. But in twenty twenty one, they expected those numbers to come back, right? Because the vaccines came back and they thought it'd be a, a boost, but they still saw another five hundred thousand were out of school. Mm. Yeah, so that's a total of a million students less. Now, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Well, they think one reason is because inflation is going up right now, which, you know, the cost of living. Wages are going up, especially the lower end, which is where a lot of people out of high school get their jobs, right? So they're making more money right now than they used to a couple years ago, all right? So to them, it's harder to give up that better paycheck to go to school and get on debt and go back to classes. So they're kind of happy, right? But the problem is, as these articles point out, that's fine now. But life gets more expensive as you get older. Mm -hmm. You get a family. You get children. You get a mortgage. Things you might want to do in life, right? And those types of jobs, typically just you don't – you can't move up so much and really increase your income. Especially without a college degree, right? Mm -hmm. So you just can't increase your money. So therefore, maybe 10, 15, 20 years down the road, they may not be making that much more money and it's going to be a lot harder on them, right? So that's kind of the sticking point is like they kind of – the reason why they're not in school is because it's, it's expensive. And they saw this in the community college level the most, but definitely still at the four-year degree level, they saw a decent uh, reduction in students. And sometimes when you start working and you get yourself set up in that lifestyle of – You've got a paycheck coming mm-hmm. in, so now you have expenses that you're going out that you're paying for. It's hard to step back into that student lifestyle. Absolutely. That's really tough. So if they're making enough now that it's not too uncomfortable, I can see how they may not want to go back. Right. I mean, because they would have to save up to go to college you mm-hmm. know, and then go off and to do that. But yeah, absolutely. That's the thing. Like, It's hard to go back into the routine of studying all the time if you get out of it. So that's – you now know the problem, right? I think we've talked about this enough. It's a, it's a problem. It's a big problem, all right? This is a very big problem. The question is, is it worth it, all right? So the question there is, it depends. Now, the first thing is, is it worth it to go to college? Yes, if you graduate first. You do not want to go to college and drop out and get the debt and then drop out. That is the absolute worst thing. Worst case scenario. That is the worst decision, all right? It's better, Don't do that. It's better not to go to college than to go to college and drop out and get that debt, all right? That's the worst scenario, all right? First thing is if you're going to go to college, you must commit to yourself that you're going to you're going to graduate. You're going to get that degree. So right. that's the first step you so must So you've got know. to make sure that you have the money ready to do that or that you are willing to take on the amount of debt it's going to take you to finish. Right. So... Over a lifetime, right? 
there was there's a lot of stats out there, but basically, uh, I think uh, I'm trying to remember where I got the stat from, but it's it's out there. You can Google it easily. But a bachelor's a someone with a bachelor's degree will earn around two point eight million dollars in their life on average. All right, and if you don't have that Sounds college, good. yeah, two point eight million over your entire life is not bad money. Someone without a college degree will make seventy five percent less than that. I don't didn't, didn't do the math, but if it's roughly three million dollars, you're talking somewhere around you know you're gonna be making around uh, seven hundred thousand dollars ish. So seven hundred thousand dollars compared to two point eight million, that's a big gap. Yeah, that right there kind of makes it seem worth it. Right, but it's dependent on that you do work all that time. Yes, you do have to work all that time to make that money. All right, now it is a little bit split. Like women who uh, with, with a BA, a bachelor's in arts, right. Well, a median lifetime earnings around two point four million, which is a little bit less than what well, than the men make on three point three million. Now, a lot of that might come into what kind of jobs they get with that degree, right? It's not apples to apples. Like, you might go off and become a teacher with one, and someone else might go off into business, and they might make, just make more money that way. It's what men and women typically gravitate to, right? That's one part. Another part is women typically, like my wife, has chosen to stay home once they have kids. So they don't earn as much money. Not quite making it up to that potential. <laughs> and then the other part of that would be, uh, it has been shown that women actually do get paid less for Me the same too. job. So there's also that bias out there. So I'm not going to shy away from it. But generally speaking, compared to people who do not go to college, they do make more money. Substantially more money. So just from a money standpoint, it does pay to go to college. All right. So you make even you've given yourself that choice then. Like mm-hmm. I still have that earning potential. If I should choose to step back in, I'm going to be able to make up that gap faster than if I didn't have the degree. So Here's some stats I found from Nerd Wallet. Uh, they, they they put this out there and they said basically someone with a high school diploma. This was I think in 2020. 2020 in one week we made seven hundred eighty one dollars. All right, not bad. And it'd be a little hard to scrape by, honestly, because you know rent's kind of expensive nowadays too. Compared to someone with a bachelor's degree, made thirteen hundred dollars. Not quite twice, but almost twice as much as it's the person. A big difference when you got to go to the grocery store and yeah. fill up your gas yeah. tank. And if you have a master's degree, you made about fifteen hundred dollars, so even more so. So you know it does pay to get more of an advanced degree. It absolutely does help when you start looking at all your bills. Mm-hmm. You also have steadier unemployment. It's a fact that in 2020, the lower end tier people in the service industry got laid off more than people with college degrees. That also happened back in the Great Recession when they back when they had the housing market dip in 2008. The, people, the vast majority of people who got laid off were the people who didn't have college degrees. So it'll keep you more employed over the long term having that college degree. And you typically get better benefits. You get better health insurance, you get retirement, like 401k plans, which actually 100% help you long term. It's huge. It's huge. It's, it's more money and it, it helps you. You get better paying jobs and you get better benefits. So yeah. from looking at those perspectives, college is actually worth it. Well, and I'm just thinking about for all those people that didn't have the college degrees and were more likely to get laid off, I'm thinking because they're always kind of living closer to the line of their expenses, they probably were less prepared to be out of work as well financially. So that was probably really, really tough. It was. So the question is, all right, Dave, you said there's a ton of debt, (laughs) but college is worth it. What should I do? Well, college is worth it. If you do it the right way, like we said before, you must commit to yourself that you're going to finish. All right. You do not want to go to college. I'm going to reiterate that and not finish. That is the absolute worst scenario. All right. When you enroll, go ahead and buy the cap and gown. (laughs) Get them ready. You're committed. (laughs) You're going to graduate. All right. The second thing is you really need to have a good plan going into it. Uh, Horn and Moistra in their book in 2019 titled Choosing College, How to Make a Better Learning Decision Throughout Your Life, stated, students need to plan before starting college and make sure the academic plan aligns to their career plan. So basically what they're saying is you need to make sure you know what you want to do in your life and make sure the career plan that you're choosing, i.e. college, is necessary and will help get you there. So are you saying it's bad if I head to college Without a career plan? Yes, I am. That's but exactly. what if I find a major that sounds interesting? That's great. I'm glad you found a major that is, is interesting. You need to know what kind of jobs are out there for that major 
100% before you graduate, if they're going to be there in 10 years, and if you really like the jobs you're going to get with that major. You might you might like the major, but not necessarily the jobs it leads to. And, and the human, paycheck, like the paycheck the, it comes with. Like humanities. They probably like the major, but realize they really can't get any good job that they want with a paycheck and the type of jobs they can get with that major. Yeah. So there is the key to not regretting your college education. Before you start, you got to know where it's leading to. But but there are people who think they do and they go off and they still change their mind. You really need to do your work before you go. That is the biggest thing you can do as far as not regretting anything in the future is really put the work in. And it is work. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to watch a video and pick that. If you're doing that, you're doing it the wrong way. You, don't pick your career based on the three-minute video. Please do not, all right? Don't just, uh, just don't Google something. <laughs> please don't just ask people on Facebook either. That is not the right way to do it. It takes some time. Anything, any good decision Reddit. any good decision in life takes some time, right? Picking your house. You better make sure you pick the house you want. You're going to get it good for a good price. It's not going to fall apart on you. You need to do your research before you buy it. Make sure you do your research, meaning the person you're going to marry. You don't want to marry the first person you, the first person you meet. You need to get to know them. It's going to be a lot of days together. Yes, it is. You're going to be working somewhere. I forget what the numbers were. Oh yeah, between sixty thousand hours to like a hundred and twenty, hundred forty thousand hours in your life, depending on how many years you work and how long each day is. That's a lot of hours. A lot of hours. You really need to make sure you know what you want to do. Better like your job. You better. So there's nothing more important you can do than try to figure that out before you go to college and have it well vetted. Like understand the good and the bad of that career. If it aligns well to your own personality, your own strengths in school and also your personality strengths, right? Mm -hmm. Aligns with the kind of lifestyle you want to have in the future. If it's going to have good job growth, so that means you can actually go get a good job, right? How much does it pay and how much can you grow into that, right? What other kind of career paths does that lead to? Mm -hmm. Does it, it match your work values? Is it going to actually be around in 10 years? Because guess what? A lot of careers aren't going to be around in 10 years. Things are changing quickly right now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's lots of jobs out there that used to be good paying jobs that just aren't around anymore because of technology development, right? You need to understand these things. And then most importantly, go out there and get some experience around those careers because nothing is like actually seeing it and being there and understanding that this is something you want to do. That's the general plan. But you say, wait, Dave, that seems like a lot of work and that seems kind of hard. It is a lot of work and it can be hard, but we actually did a lot of the work for you, by the way. You can come to our, our website, h4rl.com. We have an awesome career exploration course uh, that you can go on there. We walk you through nice online videos. You can work at it on your own pace. We have online assessments to help you really figure out your own unique traits and personalities. And then the best thing is then we help you map all that to in our database, which is very unique to unique jobs that fit you specifically. And on top of all that, that's where you can talk to Jill and I in the forums and we have live Q&A sessions where you can, if you get stuck or get lost, you can just ask us. So it's the best of both worlds. Yeah, come talk to us. Tell us about your results and what you're thinking and we'll tell you what we think. Absolutely. And you're just like, I, I kind of like this, but not really. And we actually know a lot about a lot of different careers. It can kind of help point you in the right direction maybe. Like, have you thought about this and look at this, you know? We make it, we put it from, we, we map it all out so you don't have to do all this work on your own. It's yeah. already what done. What makes that process so difficult is figuring out where to start, what to do next, what are the steps of this process, mm -hmm. and then where do I find good, helpful resources? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot out there that are not. So you can waste a lot of time trying to find what to do and what resources can be helpful. Yep. So having it all laid out for you makes it so much simpler and it really saves you a ton of time. We got dozens of interviews from people we know professionally who tell you not all the fun little stuff you see on, on the actual YouTube videos, but the good and the bad. They really tell you what it's really like to work these jobs. So you really can go into that career with your eyes wide open before you start that path. And we actually had great reviews from people who've used it because it really does help you get a, a great sense what it's like. And then if college is in your future, because guess what? Some jobs 
that might be perfect for you and fit all your checks all the boxes may not require college. It's but possible. It's, it's quite possible. And there, we talk about those type of career paths. But if college is in your, in your uh, future, we talk about how to go around and find a college and pick a college. We then talk about how do you apply to colleges because there's a lot of steps to that. And then most importantly, we then talk about all the different ways you can pay for college, right? Which wraps us back up to this. So how would you, are there ways you can make this a cheaper process? And we'll, we'll kind of take out some high level ones. The first one I would say, we've already talked about, make sure you want to know what you want. You know what you want to do before you go off to college. So you don't become 80% of students who change their major. First step. Second step, I would highly recommend going to a community college the first two years and then transfer into a four-year degree if that's what you need to do. Because community colleges are usually a lot less expensive than the four-year degree colleges, right? I would also would recommend if it works for you and your family, it doesn't for a lot of people, maybe live at home for the first couple of years and don't pay for that room and board if you can help it, all right? That would really cut off a lot of the cost of going to college. And I've actually even read articles from people who've recommended uh, taking a year or two off. Maybe you're still taking a class through a community college or online so you can stay in the habit of, right, of keep doing the study habits. Keeping the study habits, you know, not a full workload, but one or two classes just to stay in the habit of it and really take, take some time to one, figure out what you really want to do. That's really important. So important. Two, you would then also um, build up some savings from working so you can build up some of that money so awesome. you can pay for it. And then if you do for two years and can establish yourself as being financially independent from your parents, you can actually get more money from the financial aid because they're not looking at your parents' incomes, right? They're looking at your income and therefore your financial aid packages might be bigger. Clever. So those are some options. But if you're going to do that, don't just take a year or two off and travel the world, all right? That's not what I'm saying because that's not going to help you make it. It sounds awesome. (laughs) (laughs) I would love to do that. But from a career standpoint... And then we'll do a podcast about that. Is the debt that I took on to travel the world before college worth it? (laughs) Right, exactly. You're going to have some awesome experiences. I'm not going to doubt that. But you probably aren't going to be any closer to picking your career at that point because Mm. any kind of work is not going to be fun at that point. (laughs) I'm just saying. So it's good to work a job, particularly finding out what you want to do and then get some experience related to what you want to do and then go off to college. But if you want to go directly into college from high school, that's fine. Do the work now. Just do the work now. Put some effort into it. We'd love to have you on our site if you want to. We think we put together something that really would help you. But if you don't want to, I still recommend you just put some serious effort into figuring out what you want to do. And don't just watch videos online. Any place that says watch these, answer these four or five questions and pick your major, that should be a warning light. All right? Any major decision in your life should not be three or four questions away. It's not. (laughs) It's not. All right. Please put some effort into it. You will, your future self will thank you, by the way. Absolutely will thank you. Well, anyway, I think that's what I had to share today. Um, That was great, Dave. That was a ton of important information. Yeah. Again, if you, if you like this, awesome. Let us know. Uh, Please hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up, the likes. It's free. You know, you don't have to, it doesn't cost you anything. If you're listening to this on whatever platform, give us, you know, the five-star ratings or whatever you can. It really helps other people find us. And it's, like I said, cheap, easy for you to do. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps us out a lot. Helps algorithms out to get us out there a little bit more. Really would appreciate that. And again, come visit us, visit us at h 4 h 4 rl.com and uh you know if you want to join our members we'd love to see you in there and we can talk to you live then all right take it easy and uh see you next time thanks